Welcome my dear students and anyone else who happens to have accidentally stumbled across this video to my continuing lecture coverage of chapter 6, The Electronic Structure of Atoms. Uh, we begin with a quote from our glorious textbook referenced at the bottom of this slide and in the description below. Quote, the discovery of wave properties of matter, that is the discovery made by de Broglie, which I covered in a previous video, linked in the description below, raised some new and interesting questions. Consider, for example, a ball rolling down a ramp. Using the equations of classical physics, we can calculate with great accuracy the ball's position, direction of motion, and speed at any instant. Can we do the same for electron, which exhibits wave properties? The answer, as it turns out, is no. You see, a wave extends in space and its location is not precisely defined. So, what of it? Well, the German physicist Werner Heisenberg, and I'm, I'm trying to pronounce that with my most Germanish accent possible, proposed that because subatomic, that is really small particles, have both wave-like and particle-like properties, it is impossible to calculate both their positions and their momentums with perfect accuracy. This is called the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And why in the world am I, your instructor, telling you this? Well. I'm not going to ask any questions on a test about this at all. The only reason I'm telling you this is because I want you to be able to understand the following joke from this meme. One does not simply simultaneously determine both the position and momentum of an electron. Ha <laughs> ha! See, that's a Heisenberg uncertainty principle joke. Hilarious! <laughs> All right, so now we'll move on to the, to the Schrodinger equation. Now, because we cannot know with perfect accuracy both an electron's position and its speed or velocity, we also cannot accurately know both where it is around the atom's nucleus and how fast it's traveling. Actually, that sentence is kind of redundant. Anyway, the point is, we can calculate its probable location around the nucleus. This is done using an equation called the Schrodinger equation. Now, don't worry for my students, I will not make you learn the equation itself. The point is, if we solve the Schrodinger equation for electrons at different energy levels, or quanta, quantonium, it tells us where electrons are most probably, that is, statistically most probable, to be located around an atom's nucleus. For example, if we solve the Schrodinger equation for an electron at energy level 1, that is n equals 1, we get a three-dimensional spherish shape around the atom's nucleus that looks like this. Now, this region of space is called an s-orbital. It represents a more or less spherical region of space around an atom's nucleus where an electron at energy level of n equals 1 would be most likely statistically to be located. Now, as it turns out, there are four different kinds of orbitals, s, p, d, and f. We will talk about each of these in greater detail later on in this video, but just so you can see them, the next three slides show pictures of various s, p, d, and f orbitals. For example, here are our texts, artistic depictions of a 1s orbital, a 2s orbital, and a 3s orbital. Now, as you can see, they all have the exact same shape. They're all spheres. The only difference is that as the first number, the orbital's energy level n increases from 1 to 2 to 3, so does the orbital's size. Thus, there really is only one type or shape of s orbital, a sphere. Now, in contrast, each energy level of p orbitals actually includes three separate p orbitals, one that traverses the x-axis, called the px orbital right here, one traversing the y-axis, called a py orbital, and another one along the z-axis, called the pz orbital. The region in the center of each of these dumbbell lobes in these orbitals, where there is zero probability of an electron being present, is called a node. This is the space where the atom's nucleus is located. Okay, so this is a great place for me to clarify. The orbitals that I'm showing you here are all clustered around an individual atom's nucleus. It's not as though an atom's 1s orbital and its px and its 3s and its py and all these other orbitals are all somewhere else separated from each other. They're all clustered around and on top of each other centered on the atom's nucleus. So the 1s and 2s and 3s orbitals, for example, that I showed you earlier, are all actually bundled around and on top of each other, kind of like Russian nesting dolls. This video right here that I'll link to in the description below and strongly invite you to watch has a beautiful animation showing this. So what are the other orbitals? Well, as it turns out, there are five different D orbital shapes, all depicted artistically right here. And there were seven different F orbital shapes depicted right here. That takes us to the end of this video. Please tune into the next one in which I'll teach you more about the electronic structure of atoms. Until then, please have an enjoyable rest of your day.